so once again, we got to talk about the number one story in the world, which is the Hamas terrorist attacks on Israel and Israel's current response to these attacks. Now, yeah. look, guys, I'm going to tell you before I get into this. Honestly, this is probably one of my least favorite things to talk about. I don't like talking about this subject. However, this is a news channel. And yeah. when we get bombshell news, which is what I have to bring to you guys today, I have to talk about it. One of the reasons why I don't like talking about this Israel uh, Palestinian conflict is because both sides are extremely, extremely, extremely passionate about this issue. And it's just one of those things that I just don't really like to talk about that much because I don't like talking about war. I don't like talking about atrocities. Mm -hmm. And again, this situation is so incredibly complex. There's so much yeah. history behind it. Yeah. I'm just not that comfortable talking about it. Okay, so, you know, for the most part, I'm going to stick to straight up what is happening, Reporting. what's going on, and what the potential involvement is from the United States and what may have led to this and what may have caused this. Okay, mm -hmm. because currently in the United States, <clears throat> again, one of the reasons why I don't like to talk about it too much is that we're going at each other's throats in regards to. Israel versus Palestine, and which side are you on? Take a look. This is the NYC rally in which certain people stumped on, on the Israeli flag, burnt the flag, said wild stuff, stuff. Certain people rejoiced in the mass murder of innocent Israeli citizens. Israeli citizens. Certain people relished, certain people reveled in the mass slaughter. It's crazy. Certain Palestinian, certain uh, pro-Palestine people condone the, the mass murder of innocent Israelis. So there's, there's devilish people on both sides. On both sides. On both sides. Republicans are arguing that the Biden administration may be responsible for some of the funding that may have went into this attack from Hamas because the Biden administration restored hundreds of millions of dollars of U.S. aid to Palestinians, some of which allegedly uh, went into the hands of Hamas, who controls the Gaza Strip. But Friday night, interesting time, Friday night during the quiet part of the media cycle when no one's paying attention, the Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, released $75 million into Palestine, into areas that are heavily uh, heavily Hamas areas. Now, internal memos in the administration, internal White House emails, are su suggested in the last year that there was great risk of increased violence due to this money. And the administration, in writing, said, mm -hmm. go ahead with it anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's just, these are troubling issues. I'm glad that the Republicans came out and criticized them, but, you know, the President Trump last night was talking about the Abraham Accords. He's got a good point, mm -hmm. you know, that, that there was peace and prosperity in the Middle East. You see, we're on the verge of an agreement between the Saudis. Remember, the Abraham Accords didn't include the Saudis. We're on the verge of this Israel and the Saudis. There should be a court. Together. There should and be a accordance. Concordance. Iran was obviously behind this. And, and that's Between probably the two one of their motives. Yeah, so you see that, we'll you heard that. Now, I was going on this when I initially talked about the story, which is that the thought process behind we, why this happened we should, is that we Iran is trying live. to we disrupt an agreement between live Saudi Arabia and, and, and Israel that would help normalize the nation. Again, this is something that's done from the Trump era with the Abraham Accords. With each with other. Normalize relations. Again, this is something that's, that's an ideal Trump world, era, but with the Abraham Accords, which that guy bought up and used. Sadly, we I don't should. live. Sadly, all humans don't live in accord with each other. Normalize relations. Again, this is something that's left over from the Trump era with the Abraham Accords, which 
that guy bought up and reduced because that I just showed you guys. But there he, needs to be peace. Trump there needs to be Trump always harmony. Point about how under his presidency we had peace, okay? Because Trump was tough, okay? <clears> he yeah. believed in peace through strength, and mm -hmm. uh, Trump showed multiple times uh, throughout his presidency that if we f with the United States and our interests, there will be hell to he, pay. Again, he he said strong boundaries. Media, like for example, when he clapped. Uh, Iranian general. Uh, he was Sinani not weak. He was not slack. Like, you know, this is sad. He was not okay, right. In response, uh, the media screamed, World a War III. Over. Trump could have started World War III. Yeah. But fast forward, when Trump is out of office, the orange man is out of office, uh, what Number you're 45. actually saying is the world go into conflict that a lot of people believe can lead to World War III under the Biden administration. Full the Biden administration has made a Full series line. of missteps. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in regards to Facts. foreign policy, and who knows, okay, it seems that the paper trail here is showing that maybe, just maybe, we have another one, just like with Afghanistan, just like what's going on with Ukraine, that, you know, the in Biden administration inevitable. doesn't really seem to be competent. That's what certain people say. Handling it's some of our it foreign is policy inevitable. issues. For it example, is imminent. Nancy Blinken came out and said that the U.S. has not seen any evidence of Iran's involvement in the Abbas attack on now, this is what he said <laughs> on CNN's State of the Union. Um, however, the Wall Street Journal is reporting that Iran actually helped block the attack mm. on Israel over several weeks. Now, if we're that's get true, that's terrible. This, but again, I want to show you guys how the mainstream of the media automatically if that evil kind of plot happened, with the Biden administration's that wicked plot. narrative, even though Pre the Biden administration is to be untrustworthy, especially when it comes to this area of for policy, because one thing that Republicans have been arguing is that the six billion dollars that the Biden administration gave to Iran or gave back to Iran, I guess that's technically how you're supposed to frame it, um, that could have been used to help fund this attack because money is fungible. But yeah. again, the mainstream of the media, despite knowing this, despite admitting this, Kristen Welker admitting that this is a possibility in her interview with Antony Blinken, she peddles the Democrats and the Biden administration talking points in this exchange with Nikki Haley, who, again, is accusing uh, Iran of potentially using that money to help fund these attacks. Take a look. The what do you say about the argument that money is fungible? So Iran may have known this money is coming and used other funds to help fund this attack that happens. Iran has, uh, Iran has unfortunately always used and focused its funds on supporting terrorism, on supporting groups like uh, like Hamas, uh, and it's done that. When there have been sanctions, it's done that. When there haven't been sanctions, and it's always prioritized that. And again, I come back to the proposition that from these funds have always been under the law, available to Iran to use for humanitarian purposes. I actually think it was irresponsible for Secretary Blinken to say that the $6 billion doesn't weigh in here. I mean, let's be honest with the American people and understand that Hamas knows and Iran knows they're moving money around as we speak because they know $6 billion is going to be released. That's the reality. When I was at the United Nations, you saw that when those planes full of cash sent by Obama to Iran, I went to the International Atomic Energy Agency. I met with them. What happened was those funds were sent to Hezbollah in Lebanon. They were sent to Hamas in Gaza. They were sent to the Houthis in Yemen. They go and spread terrorism every time they get a dollar. It doesn't go to the Iranian people. It does go to terrorist attacks. And Secretary Blinken's just wrong to imply that this money is not being moved around as we but speak. And yet, Ambassador, those that and love and yet, Ambassador, there's just no proof of that yet. This is just the hours after that immediate attack. Is it irresponsible to level that charge when you really don't have any evidence of that at this point in time? The evidence is look at what the Iranian people have done to freedom-loving people around the world. Look at what the Iranian people, the Iranian regime has done to threaten Israel over the years. To think that they're not moving money around is irresponsible to say that to the American people. They are moving money around to threaten those they hate. They hate Israel. They hate America. They are going to continue to use this. It was wrong to release the $6 billion, but let me tell you what else was wrong. It was wrong to go and have that debacle in Afghanistan. It was wrong to wave 
sanctions on Iran that gave them even more money. Money has been flowing to Iran, and that is the problem. Is when Iran gets money, they use it for hate. An ambassador Haley, just to be clear again, the Secretary of State said categorically that they have not seen a link. Yeah, so they also said there is no evidence, or that they didn't see evidence that Iran helped plot this attack <laughs> on Israel, except now we do have evidence, according to the Wall Street Journal, and this is all alleged, it's all yeah. right now, and yeah. this will change, okay? So again, I, I just want to keep on all this stuff that's alleged, right? Wall Street Journal is alleging that Iran, in fact, did help plot this attack, and if Iran helped plot it, that's, then that's, I that's would just say that they probably funded it. Now, yeah. again, money yeah. is fungible. We could argue that even though this is really this supposed to be used for humanitarian purposes, since they know they're going to get it, then maybe just maybe they moved around some other funds that may have been earmarked for other things to say, you know what, um, you know, we're going to use this money to fund or to help fund this attack or terrorism because we know we're going to get six billion to replace it. Okay, so again, this is, you know, it's, it's one of those things. I think what really matters the most is whether or not Iran was involved. And as of right now, it seems like it's, there is, you know, that's, suggestion to that's a the, the Wall Street Journal. Okay, it's possible. That the case. It is possible. And do Iranian be possible. security officials helped plan Hamas's Saturday surprise attack on Israel and gave the green light for the assault at the union in Beirut last Monday, according to senior officials of Hamas and Hezbollah, another Iran-backed militant group. Officers of Iran's Islamic Military Guards Corps Corps had worked with Hamas since August to devise the air, land, and sea incursions, the most significant breach of Israel's borders since the 1973 Yom Kippur War, those people said. Details of the operation were refined during several meetings in Beirut, attended they, by they IRGC officers and representatives of four Iran backed militant groups, including Hamas, which hold power in Gaza and Hezbollah, the Shiite militant group, and political faction in Lebanon, they said. Yeah, so again, considering the sophistication of these attacks, the fact that they overwhelmed the Iron Dome, the fact that they were able to cross the border, they didn't. The Iron Dome used this radar uh, to the level of sophistication detect incoming threats from suggest that uh, they may have had some backing from Iran. Again, if I was that's what the man, Iron Dome does to people and, that and don't also know. Also, got some questions about you know how did this intelligence failure occur? Okay, like. You know, I think that U.S. and Israeli intelligence is the most sophisticated in the world. And, you know, to me, I'm just shocked that the intelligence would fail the way that it did when it comes to this type of attack. And considering how it was plotted and planned out over time, I, I just find it shocking that the Israelis or U.S. intelligence didn't know about this beforehand. But regardless, again, this is a terrible, terrible, terrible situation. It, it really is. Uh, U.S. officials say they haven't seen evidence of Tehran's involvement in an interview with CNN that aired Sunday. Secretary because they say that Blinken said, quote, we have not yet seen evidence that Iran that doesn't mean that, is, that it is not that true is that Iran, Iran helped show. to uh, plot. Uh, quote, we don't have any information this time Just because to certain people say account, there's no evidence, that doesn't mean that there is no evidence. Yeah, so I mean, again, this guy <laughs> also said that uh, without People that Hamas say there's no evidence could be lying today, to us. They would have the funding or the financial resources. So again, you know, I'm trying to figure out exactly what's going on with the Biden administration here. Okay. Oh, uh, Biden. Do they believe that Iran could have possibly been behind this or or no? Okay. I mean, I, I'm, I'm very confused. Okay. Because out of one side of my mouth, there's no evidence. By the other side of my mouth, well, Iran definitely uses <coughs> their money, their funds to fund terrorism. But yes. You know, they don't think that it definitely uses their money, their funds. I'm very confused, okay, because out of one side of their mouth, they're saying, hey, this is no evidence. By the other side of their mouth, they're saying, well, Iran definitely uses their money, their funds to fund terrorism. But, you know, they don't think that they use any of the $6 billion or essentially use some other funds knowing that they were getting $6 billion in order to fund this attack. But, again, there are various sides. Yeah. To this issue as far as undoubted, not, undoubted Iran was involved. A European <coughs> official and an advisor to the Syrian government, Howard Gates, the same account of Iran's involvement in the lead up to the attack as the senior Hamas and Hezbollah members. Asked about the meeting, Mahmoud Badari, a senior Hamas official, said the group planned the attack on its own. This is a Palestinian and Hamas decision, he said. The Iranian delegation at the United Nations in New York didn't 
respond to requests for comment. Iran's leader Ayatollah uh, Ali Khamenei uh, has praised the attack, saying in a post on X, formerly known as Twitter, that the quote Zionist regime will be eradicated at the hands of the Palestinian people and the resistance forces throughout the region. A direct Iranian role would take Tehran long-running conflict with Israel out of the shadows, raising the risk of broader conflict in the Middle East. Senior Israeli uh, security officials have pledged to strike at Iran's leadership if Tehran is found to be responsible for killing Israelis. So yeah, this is a huge deal. Okay, this is a big, big, big deal. Yes, yes. Right? But yes. that's very recent in the sense that, yeah, I mean, if, if Iran planned this, uh, which Iran is, you know, which is, 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 is Israel's version is of, I guess, the it's Holocaust, blame. right? I think that it's that blame. is how it's being characterized. Then essentially, that is an act of war, and at that point, that would incentivize Iran should be held accountable if that is true. With military action, if that is Iran not is groundless, groundless, if that is not unfounded, in another war, because if Israel goes to war with Iran, best believe the U.S. Will Iran be is culpable that, if that you know, is the case. Iran is blameworthy. Blame worthy. Blame as so Russia could jump in as well too, and that is obviously the worst Bruh, case scenario. That's so, gonna, gonna again, lead to we don't really know, but this is what the Wall Street Journal is saying. Bruh. We'll see what other news we get, what other information we get. But as Bruh. of right now, this is what is being reported by yeah. the Wall Street Journal. Subject to change. Again, all this stuff is subject to change. All I know is that Yeah, bro, it's it's wild right now, bro. It really is. It really is, man. Yeah, I man, hope a WW3 doesn't happen. What the this hell is Vivek. Vivek is speaking US and the out against, against and the, Israeli the BS2. That He's talking to, talking to, to Tucker Carl, Carlson. Later. Carlson. I think it's a question for now if you're Israel. I mean, On the X app. Tucker has child. his own show now. Independent. Position to get he used to from work for Fox. Business and otherwise. But put that to one side. The message that I would send would be very different. Get to the bottom of what allowed this gaping hole of intelligence and defense Both to even Repu- happen. Republic, Republic, that same Re- Republican, Republican. His Republic, job was to keep you from getting cancer, and then you got that cancer. Don't go trust that same doctor. To remove your tumor. Facts, they facts. Don't let airplanes when they Logic crash. Based. The pilots or the people who crashed the airplane, that airliner, is not the one who released the black box. And so I think those answers have to come now. That's not a question for later. And all right, guys. So the continuation of the coverage of the biggest news story in the world involving Israel and Gaza is ongoing war between Israel the incessant. and Hamas. We gotta talk about some bombshell news. News that I think should all stop and give us pause to think, okay? And the reason why I'm saying that is because in situations like this, it is important that cooler heads prevail, yes. okay? That we take yes. our emotions out of what's Logic happening. Logic should take override emotion. Say, what is think rationally. Picture? What is going on and where is this leading us to? And the reason why I say that is because when you have these types of events, a lot of times, our emotions get the best of us. Yes. Our emotions cause us to do things to do that impetuous, in impulsive, are not going to have injudicious things. Rash. In fact, it actually costs us more lives mm, casualty. Uh, than the lives that were tragically will lost. To uh, that made us take the actions casualties. that we took in the first place. Now, again, I think that what happened in Israel, the terrorist attack by Hamas, is Israel's version of unnecessary. 9/11. Stuff. It was terrible, and it was one of the most horrific things that I've seen in a long, long, long time. I've seen almost every video that you possibly can see. This war is it's ugly. Committed by Hamas. Unquestionably I would, ugly. I would not be doing my job if I did not say to you guys that, hey, I have questions about why or how this was allowed to happen. How this took place. U.S. In Israel, have the best intelligence in the world, and I find it stunning and quite strange that the Israelis did not see this coming. That yeah, all of their defense that's, that's peculiar. and intelligence seemed to fail at the time that's when odd. it was needed the most. Again, we poured billions of dollars into this. We gave them a billion dollars in 
2022, we've given them over $150 billion over the decades of our friendship. And for all of that to fail and for this to happen, it really is it's a stunning moment that we really have to take a step back and ask, how do we spend billions of dollars on the best intelligence in the world that could not pick up on that this failed. attack that failed. clearly was well-funded and well-planned and event? In fact, allegedly, this is something that was planned since August, according to the Wall Street Journal. Uh, this was planned in conjunction with Iran. Iran helped plan these attacks. And if Iran did help plan these attacks, then that has very, very, very serious geopolitical consequences because that essentially yeah. is an act of war. Yeah. And you would expect that if it is true that Iran uh, did plan these attacks or help plan these attacks or fund these attacks, then Israel would declare war against Iran because, again, this is their version of 9-11. And that, to me, seems to be the direction that this is going in. And that's why I say that we really have to take a step back and really ask questions about what is going on here and where is this going to lead to because there is a bombshell story that dropped from Egypt's intelligence officials in which they're claiming that Israel actually ignored warnings wow. of something big happening. Wow. Now, of course, Israel is going to deny this, but yeah. let's get a little bit about this. Of course. News clip for you guys. And I want to get deeper into this because... Over here in America, uh, the neocons are beating at the war drum, and you can see the writing Crazy, on the wall in regards to where this could likely end up, okay? If you really don't take a step back and figure out, okay, well, what is actually going on here? So let's read here. Israel's failure to anticipate the Hamas terror attacks came despite warnings from Egypt that, quote, something big was about to happen, according to an intelligence officer from the Go Between Nation. Quote, we have warned them an explosion of the situation is coming and very soon, Damn and it will be big, said the official from Egypt, which often serves as a mediator between Israel and Hamas. They, but they under, underestimated such warnings. The Egyptian was intelligence of, official of told Israel, the Associated Press of while speaking for the mission to of anonymity. The threat from Gaza was overlooked because Israeli officials were focused if on that the is rising the case. tide of violence for the West Bank. Egyptian insider claimed. However, Israel sternly dismissed the anonymous official's claim as, quote, totally fake news. Quote, the report to the effect that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu received a message in advance from Egypt is absolutely false. The Prime Minister's office tweeted, quote, no message in advance has arrived from Egypt and the Prime Minister has neither spoken nor met with the head of Egyptian intelligence since the formation of the government either directly or indirectly. Now, you guys see that you heard that. So without further ado, I'm actually going to go ahead and roll a news clip so you guys get a better understanding of what's going on. Take a look. Now let's turn to the war in Israel, entering now its third day. NBC's Kelly Kobayea is in Tel Aviv with the latest here. Kelly, what exactly can you tell us about where the tensions <laughs> currently stand out there in Israel? Well, we're expecting to hear from the Prime Minister shortly, sometime at the top of the hour, according to his office, uh, uh, letting us know just about an hour ago that he was going to speak. In the meantime, his office has released a statement strongly denying these reports that Egypt had warned Israel uh, that there was some sort of attack in the works days ago and that that warning was effectively ignored in the statement. Uh, the office vehicles. calls it yeah, absolutely yeah, false, it, it, saying it that no message in advance was, has arrived from Egypt, and the prime minister has neither spoken nor met with the head of Egyptian intelligence since the formation of his government. So very strong pushback uh, uh, to those reports that the government, in fact, did have the last a time warning. I checked, the Israeli government was saying at least 1,200 so. people got Meantime, deleted the in Israel. The, the Israeli got military unjustifiably gratuitously deleted. Against Gaza at this hour, they say that between Saturday and Monday, they less, uh, struck about 1,200 targets. And so they stepped that up and doubled 86. that. Uh, just today, they say that they're hitting no uh, weapons no stores, penitence, manufacturing no sites, command and control centers, and rocket launchers. 
inside Gaza. Uh, Keeping in mind, this is an incredibly densely packed people. urban area with 2.3 million people. The vast majority are very, a lot of them are civilians. There are women and children inside Gaza. There are ex potentially, ex if you uh, believe the numbers be put forward by uh, some Palestinian mili militants inside Gaza, potentially 130 hostages in that territory yeah, there's as American well. Hostages. The United Nations says that uh, uh, the Hama the Hamas has been cut off food uh, and medicine health, shortages to come American if, in fact, hostages. Israel does maintain this Crazy. siege on Gaza, which they have promised to do. Don? Yeah, so you've seen that, you heard that. Now, again, this is a very, very, very sensitive situation um, as Egypt uh, also, again, is a key player in this situation because they share the border of the Gaza Strip with Egypt. Okay, they have about seven miles of border, and they have to deal with the geopolitical consequences of Israel invading Gaza and the attacks that were committed by Hamas. So Egypt, they don't even want the Palestinians in their country. Okay, this is why they call Gaza an open air prison, prison because they're literally trapped there. Stuck. Israel unable or to leave Egypt the wants country. them in their country, unable so they're basically leave. trapped. And Egypt, again, they are pushing for Israel and Hamas to de-escalate, right? De-escalate the situation. Now I can't imagine that Israel is actually going to do that, but again. It really is fascinating to think about how Israeli intelligence fail like that, and then you have Egypt coming out and it saying, is, is. well, we tried to warn them, we tried to we tell them about lie. it, but they ignored it. Now, do we know this uh, is true? Allegedly, you know, intentionally ignored. Is it possible to know if this was true or if this happened? Probably not possible. Now, of course, then Yahoo is not going to come out and say, yeah, we knew what we ignored they, it. They, okay, they, so, yeah. I mean, of course, they're not going to, to say, say that Egypt was right. They allowed okay? Hamas but to attack Again, what really innocent concerns people. me is the direction that this is headed in. Because like I told you guys, um, according to the Wall Street Journal, Iran is responsible for helping plan these attacks. And if that is the case, that is, in fact, an act of war. And you can expect the next step, which would be for Israel to declare war on Iran, that would be coming in the future. Is if, if Israel confirms for themselves that Iran is did actually occur help plan these attacks. Now again, we don't know that for sure yet. We don't know that hundred percent for certain, but that hasn't stopped neocon warmongers like Liz Graham mm. from coming out here and basically calling for the United States to bomb oil refineries and assets in Iran wow. in response to this situation. Take a look. So there's a lot at stake in how we right. encourage Israel to respond to the horrifying Hamas attacks. Abominable. Wisdom and long-term thinking are essential, which you will not be surprised to learn Abominable. what is not what we are getting. Watch this person, for example, who happens to be the media's pick for president of the United States. This is not just an attack on Israel. This is an attack on America because they hate us just as much. And what we have to understand is this is the reason that we have to unite around making sure our enemies do not hurt our friends. America can never be so arrogant to think we don't need friends, just like we needed them on 9-11. That's why Ukraine needs us when Russia's doing this. That's why Israel needs us when Hamas and Iran are doing this. And I'll say this to, to Prime Minister Netanyahu, finish them. Finish them. Hamas did this, you know Iran's behind it, finish them. They should have held the pay for what they've just done. This was an attack on America, she says, when in fact it was not. And for that reason, we must quote, finish Iran. And this is what nearly a million of other people. What are we watching here? This is not sober leadership. She's a child, and this is the tantrum of a child. Ignorant, cocksure, what? Here's fellow no Iran Instagram just spelling it out. Right. And calling and, for and, the bombing of Iran. So I've been on the phone all day to the Mideast, and I've told our allies and people with connections to Iran what I would do. I would tell Iran that if Hezbollah attacks Israel, we're going to come after you, the Iranians, and have a coordinated effort between the United States and Israel to put Iran on the oil business by destroying their refineries, their oil 
probably more uh, casualties now. In Hezbollah, attacks Israel, I would make a lot of dead. Most well, likely. for every Israeli or American hostage executed uh, by Hamas, we should uh, take down an Iranian oil refinery. The only way you've got to keep this war from escalating is to hold Iran accountable. How much more death and destruction do we have to take from the Iranian regime? I am confident this was planned and funded by the Iranians. Hamas is a bunch of animals. Savages. Uh, deserve to be Monsters. treated like animals. So if I was Israel, I would go in on the ground. There is no truce to be had here. I would Hamas battle people. Hamas. This is the best opportunity Israel has. Not to the destroy Palestinian Hamas, people, the Hamas people are to the Iranians. If you disgrace me, this honorable, disreputable, scummy, devilish people. If you escalate the war by the void of rectitude, not the not the innocent Palestinian Israeli hostage. We're going to blow up your oil refineries and put you out of business. It is now the people, the people the that say death to Palestinian people are garbage uh, people. Senator, I, want to get your I said this before. Because I think you probably love they are garbage people. Uh, to it, this people. To the, uh, the people from both sides, uh, that came out a ago both sides that, that say death States, to people from the other side started blowing up their are rubbish people. Lindsey that's Graham that's facts. He hasn't thought it through. Yeah. Like I said before, if you only care. support the innocent Israeli people, you are not a good person. If you only support the innocent Palestinian people, you are not a good person. For war to end all wars, that there is such a thing. But of course, there isn't such a thing. Wars beget more war. The bigger the conflict, the uglier and longer lasting the consequences. Murder, murder is murder of. Yeah, so I agree with Dr. Paul. I really do. Murder uh, is uncondonable regardless. To already be beaten That's what everybody should be saying. Not everybody is saying Iran that. Who are suggesting that we bomb their murder field. of people uh, on both sides we can actually is get everything sorted out in regards to why this happened. Odious. How it was allowed to happen. To be execrated. Uh, to be hated. It, who funded it again? To be demonized. Know, I, I personally think that Iran is behind it. I think that they funded it. If I was a betting man, that that's is possible. That I would bet on it. But I don't know for sure. And I think that one lesson in history we, sh we should learn is that, you know, let's actually make sure we know the culprit before we mm. jump to conclusions before and then start emotion sending Americans speak emotionally, men and women over overseas to die. Okay? Let you know, logic like, override sure emotion. There were actually weapons of mass destruction in Iraq before we right. invaded. Iraq and toppled Saddam Hussein, and then eventually found out that there was no weapon he was destruction, and then had to deal That's with what. ISIS, uh, who rose to power because the top Heedlessness does not lead to no, good no outcomes. Plan on Straight how up and to down. actually restabilize the country. Because again, it's almost as if these neocons, they don't learn the lessons of the past, the failures that we've had at a foreign policy level in the Middle East. Again, the same thing happens. It's, it's crazy, man. Crazy, bro. One element. Yeah, man. The people that support, the people that are emotional, super emotional, they're they're bugging, bro. They're bugging. Shut up and down. To, they're bugging. To invade Taiwan, they're bugging. It would be now or never for them, right? So now you might be dealing with an invasion of Taiwan. You got to deal with Iran. You got to deal with Ukraine. Uh. Policy level in the Middle East. Again, the same thing happens time and time and time again, but these people still want more war. Then again, crazy. You know, what would happen in a situation where the United States declares war on Iran because I guess Israel declares war on Iran and Israel decides to do war on Iran? Well, it would be World War Three. You can imagine that Russia would be dragged in it. They would Different be on the side countries. of Iran. Now, I have no clue how China would react. I can imagine a situation like that with the U.S. occupied. With Iran Muchos and Ukraine, uh, and Russia occupied with Ukraine and Iran, this would be a great time for them to go into Taiwan, right? I mean, I, I honestly really believe that in the case of a World War III, we're going to be seeing a global conflict at levels that we have not seen since World War II. And it's going to be especially bad because you have nuclear nations that are involved, multiple nuclear nations. And I, I can imagine in, in a situation where the United States is tied up in Ukraine and with Iran, 
China would see that as a prime opportunity to invade Taiwan, it would be now or never for them, right? So now you might be dealing with an invasion of Taiwan, you got to deal with Iran, you got to deal with Ukraine. Uh, you know, I think that the United States military, uh, for as mighty as we were, uh, again, mm -hmm. I, I would imagine that we were stretched very thin trying to defend and fight for a new front. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, I think that that would be a terrible scenario for us. I don't think that Lindsey Graham has thought about that. I don't think that Nikki Haley has thought about that. I don't think that Mike Pence has thought about that. I don't think that Dan Crenshaw has thought about that. I don't think that any of the neocons that are already beating at the war drums have actually really thought about the consequences of these types of actions that they're calling for. Just like Lindsey Graham didn't think about the consequences of assassinating Vladimir Putin, which he did. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a mess, bro. It, yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah, it's, it is crazy right now, bro. Certain people, they do not think logically, bro, on, on both sides. On, on both sides. In, in every group, there's, there, are, there are people that are not thinking, th thinking logically, bro. It is what it is, man. I, I, I hope Realtor.com people is the number one app real estate professionals trust. So when you're buying a home, people change for the better, man. I, that's what I hope. Had a congresswoman Rashida Tlaib has been facing some gonna, pretty severe backlash. If the over emotional people are to Hamas's terror attack on Israeli yeah, Rashida, civilians. Rashida, the, the member of now the she's squad. Now getting some backlash for flying the Palestinian flag minority. near her office. Now, I'm going to get to that part Left in just a moment, politicians. but just as a reminder for why she initially AOC, faced Corey backlash, Bush, Ayanna her initial statement in response to what Hamas did was, I grieve the Palestinian and Israeli lives lost yesterday, today, and every day. I am determined, as ever, to fight for a just future. The path to that future a must include lifting the blockade, she ending she the occupation, and dismantling the apartheid system that creates to the these suffocating, innocent Israeli people. She cannot answer. That can lead That's to crazy to me, bro. As long as our she did not billions in that unconditional funding to she support acted the like it was difficult this heartbreaking cycle to of answer continue. that question, bro. Now, it's it not difficult okay to say that what happened to the Israeli citizens is abominable indubitably thousand israeli civilians but so doing that people, they, right after yeah. the news breaks they, of what hamas did they're they're dishonest man idea. so, so the people the are backlash. fake i agree with that backlash. Oh, i'm just gonna keep it real with you guys okay but what i do not agree with is the backlash she's getting for flying the palestinian flag as an american as a palestinian american mm -hmm. Because the Palestinian flag is not the same as the Hamas flag. Facts, that's facts. And going that, after that, that should be that, known. That, that should no be sense. understood. But let me give you the full story. But not so. Some people to fly act the Palestinian like flag they outside of congressional office. There like it is. There's it's an image of it. It's hard to understand. Reese Gorman uh, tweeted like, about it saying, it "New Representative Rashida Tlaib has a Palestinian flag understand. hanging outside of her house Crazy. office amid Hamas's invasion of Israel." But it's not a Hamas flag, it is a Palestinian flag. Palestinian a civilians a exist. Clear difference. Uh, their difference. culture exists. Yeah. The idea that she needs to denounce her own, like the Palestinian flag as, again, a Palestinian American makes no sense to me. It's but a separate flag. former Israeli ambassador to the United Nations, Danny Dannon, went on Fox News and, of course, uh, decided to discuss. Even though uh, I think Rashi Rashida to, is a Moki, uh, is it? Clown. Mr. Ambassador, what's your reaction to our Congresswoman uh, Rashida Tlaib? It is she's a Democrat. Bad for her she's to have that Palestinian flag. Her she is Palestinian. Statement, blaming Israel, blaming your apartheid government for what's happening. Rashida oh, Tlaib, she the disgrace. She shame on her for such a behavior. You know, imagine that the, in her hometown in Detroit, Michigan, one thousand people would have been kidnapped and killed. Children, families. How can she even identify herself with such brutality? I think the people of Michigan should send her home. I know it doesn't represent the, the American people. This, we know that it is a shame that Rashida condones what happened to the innocent that. Israeli people. Man. It is, it is odious. It is to be executed. Her, 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 her mentality, her mindset. That's what will happen also in this world. Her failure to. You also have Republican lawmakers like Congressman Max Miller uh, introducing measures to, to the ban citizens in, in Israel, the Israel. Palestinian flag, uh, among others. 
he wrote uh, on X, formerly known as Twitter, the halls of Congress belong Silence to America. Silence is violence. They should Silence be reserved for complicity. flags that embody our great nation. The Palestinian flag should not have a place here. That's why I sponsored an appropriations amendment to end this silliness. And his amendment stipulates, none of the funds made available by this act may be used to acquire or display any flag or pennant other than the flag of the United States, the flag or pennant of any state or territory or possession of the United States, or the POW MIA flag. Yeah, so I agree with you, Leo. So, um, as I said yesterday on the coverage, yesterday was not the day to talk about, uh, you know, to voluntarily bring up the idea of apartheid, etc. It was yeah. just poor yeah. form, to yeah. say the least. Yes, yes. Uh, because Facts. People are suffering. Rashida is a clown, you know, bro. They got family She's members there, etc. That's not the day to. That's why to she did that. agitate on that. Um, it doesn't mean the occupation is wrong. The occupation is but wrong. Definitely uh, so, wrong. But uh, it's not a productive way to handle it, in my opinion. Okay. The Palestinian flag, I agree with Aaron. It's the flag of Palestinians. It's not Hamas. But, if you but, fly the Hamas flag, then I'm livid. Yes. And I, then Enraged. I incensed. Okay. Uh, but so. as now the Palestinians are getting crushed, if that was the Hamas flag, you could largely blame Hamas 